If you're feeling a little overwhelmed by all the settings on your camera, don't worry, because this video is the ultimate guide to the best camera settings for video. We're gonna step through all the key settings you need to know and how to use them. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you grow an audience and scale your revenue with online video. If you're seeing value in this video, make sure you're giving it a thumbs up. It really makes a huge difference. And all the links to everything I mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. Let's jump into it. So there's frame rate, bit rates, resolution, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, audio levels, manual settings, auto settings. Yep, starting out with a fancy new camera can definitely be overwhelming. But really when it comes down to it, there's only a few key settings that you need to know to get amazing results when you're shooting video. So we're gonna run through them now one by one with a little background to explain how they work and how I'd recommend setting them up. Now I'd suggest watching this video through once first to learn the basics and then come back and follow along like a checklist next time you're going to shoot. Now there's nine things or nine steps that I'm gonna cover off on and I would suggest that you follow through in the exact same order. So the first one then is your video resolution or the actual quality of the video that you're gonna be capturing. So here you've typically got options like 720p, 1080p, 4K, maybe even 6K or 8K, depending on the camera that you're using. Now I would say in this day and age that most people should be creating their videos at at least 1080p or maybe even 4K, depending on the camera that you're using. I'm a big fan of shooting at the highest quality possible for you. And then if you need to lower that quality down, do that in your editing or when you're saving out your videos afterwards, but you can never come back and add more quality later. So I'd always suggest starting wherever possible with the highest quality recording that you can, and then yeah, lower it if you need to. Now, the only real exception to that would be if your computer or the device you're gonna be editing on isn't capable of seamlessly editing that footage down, then that would be a good reason to lower the quality so that your editing experience is still smooth and fast. So for me and my setup, I'm currently shooting on a Panasonic GH5 and I'm creating all of our videos at 4K and we're actually uploading them to YouTube at 4K as well. Now that's not to say that you need to be doing that. A lot of the biggest channels around are still uploading in just 1080p. So if you've got the access to 4K and it's gonna be easy for you to do, then by all means upload in 4K as well. If not, there's nothing wrong with 1080. Okay, so that's the video resolution. The second one is your frame rate, the number of frames per second that make up the movement or the motion in your video. Now the default setting for a lot of cameras and phones out there is 30 frames per second. And it really doesn't make a huge difference if your end place that you're gonna be uploading your videos is just to YouTube. YouTube is going to recognize and play them all back without any drama. But if you are chasing something closer to that filmic cinematic look, then maybe 24 frames per second might be the one for you. For me personally, I'm based in Australia, therefore in a PAL region. And so all of my videos that I shoot, I'm shooting at 25 frames per second. So the next one then is your video bitrate. So the quality captured of really each one of those frames per second, the amount of data that's captured to build up that 4K or 1080p video. So your bitrate is measured in megabits per second. And so the higher the number, the more data that's gonna be captured, which also means the larger the video file size will be as well. Now this is one of those things where it is gonna come down to the individual camera itself when it comes to the actual qualities that you will have access to, but also they're not going to be comparable. So 18 megabits per second on one camera might be really good. It might be the highest setting available to you, whereas 18 on another camera might be the lowest setting. So it is worth doing a quick Google search for your camera make and model to see what recording bit rates and resolutions and things you've actually got access to so that you can get the best settings for your specific camera. So for my setup here, again, on my Panasonic GH5, I'm recording at 4K at 25 frames per second and at 100 megabits per second. And that makes up the overall picture quality and resolution that I'm creating these videos at. Now what you might find when you're setting these up in your camera is that they could be three individual settings, one for each. Or you might find that there are presets that you can select from that actually combine all three. But now you've got an understanding of what they mean and which ones you should be selecting. Now just before we get to number four, and we start locking down all of our brightness settings and controlling the overall look and feel of our shot, the main reason that you wanna do this is so that you can be setting your shot up to be the way that you want it to be without worrying that your camera is gonna make some auto adjustment adjustment to brighten your shot randomly or to even push you out of focus in some cases based on what it thinks that your shot needs and requires. So by following through in order, what we're gonna be covering next, this is gonna take that power away from your camera and put it in your hands so that you can set things up the way that you want it for your specific shot, knowing that is not going to change throughout your shot. 
The next one then, number four, is your shutter speed. Now the shutter speed will affect the overall look, the motion, and how that's captured in your videos, but also the exposure or the brightness of your shot as well. And setting your shutter speed correctly will also help you remove any flickering or banding from any lights that you're using in your shot. Now depending on which frame rate you picked for your videos back in step number two, then that's gonna dictate as what your shutter speed should be. So as a general rule, your shutter speed should be twice what your frame rate is. So in my case, if I'm setting my shutter speed to 25 frames per second, then my shutter speed is going to be 50 or one over 50 or one fiftieth of a second. Likewise, if you're in the US or you're filming at 30 frames per second, then you wanna be setting your shutter speed to 60 or one over 60. And if you're gonna be shooting at 24 frames per second, again, you would double that to go to 48, but not every camera has the option to set 48. So normally in that case, you would just set it to 50 and that's gonna be close enough to give you great results. So number five then is your aperture. So the lower your aperture number or f-stop, it's also called, the lower that number, the more light is gonna be let through and the higher the number, the less light is gonna be let through. Now adjusting your aperture isn't just for adjusting the exposure or the brightness in your shot. It also helps you change the look and feel of the video you're gonna be capturing as well. So if you have a lower aperture number, so you're letting more light into your camera lens, this is where you can do things like blur out the background of your videos. Whereas having a higher number will mean that a lot more in your shot is going to be in focus. Now, if you wanna know more about creating that blurry background look that everyone seems to want on YouTube, then check out the video I've got linked up in the cards. So for this setup for me right now, the lens I'm currently using is a Panasonic lens, which will let me go down to an F 2.8. So that's what I'm shooting at right now. Now, a lot of the videos that we shoot on this channel, I'm using a Sigma lens, and that'll actually let me get down to, I think it's F 1.4. So more light and a blurrier background with that lens. So I just switch between the two depending on which video I'm making. So once you've got your shutter speed and your aperture locked in, the third piece that really dictates the exposure of your shot, the brightness of your shot is your ISO. So the three of those together form what's called the exposure triangle. And making adjustments to any one of those three will allow you to brighten or darken your shot. But that's why I want you to set them this way first. If you're locking down your shutter speed to get that correct for your frame rate and for any flickering in your scene, then you're setting your aperture. So you're locking down the look and feel of the shot that you want as for how blurry or not things like the background are in your shot then the third piece then that you can adjust is your iso so again this is another number now the lower the iso number the darker the shot the higher the iso the brighter the shot now you could think of iso kind of like digital brightness the brighter you go with it you can start to introduce noise and pixelation into your shot so you really don't want to be going too far with it now as for what too far is, it's gonna come down to again, your specific camera make and model. But as a general rule, most cameras will be fine up to around 800, some of them even 1600. But pushing beyond that is where a lot of cameras will fall apart and look pretty average. So again, for my setup here with this specific camera and this specific lens, my ISO is set to 320 to get this look. Now, if you are gonna be filming outside and you've set your shutter speed, you've set your aperture, and when you're dialing in your ISO and it is still too bright, even at the lowest settings, that's where using an ND filter on your camera lens can really help you, again, dial in all of those settings, but still have control over the brightness of your shot. So you can think of an ND filter like sunglasses for your camera lens to darken your shot down. So when I'm shooting outside, I'll always take with me a variable ND filter so I can just turn it and adjust the shot to make it brighter or darker once I've got all of those other settings set correctly. Now it's not something that's absolutely required, but it is something that's nice to have in your toolkit depending on which camera you're going to be using. So now that you've got your ISO dialed in, the next one is your white balance or the color temperature. Again, plays a big role in the overall look and feel of your shot. If you have this set wrong, then your shot could look very blue or very orange, depending on how it's set. Now when it comes to white balance, most cameras out there will have some sort of presets that you can choose from. That could be presets for a cloudy day, a sunny day, indoors or for incandescent lighting, or a lot of cameras will also let you take this one step further and manually type in your color temperature number, your Kelvin number, to manually set your white balance so that it's correct for your scene. So what I'd suggest you do here is to cycle through those presets and find the one that matches your scene or the one that you like the look of most. Or if you're gonna be manually setting your white balance, 
balance by typing in a color temperature, again, measured in Kelvin. A great place to start with that is to match the color temperature of any lights that are in your scene. So if you're using, say, any LED panels, and on the back of them, they tell you what the color temperature is, like say 5600 Kelvin, then you wanna be setting your camera to match that. So that brings us to number eight, which is setting your microphone volume level. Now, the reason you wanna manually set this and not just leave it on auto is because if you leave it on auto and you stop talking in your video for a second or two, then your camera is going to say, all right, there's no sound, or I'm not hearing anything. And it's gonna boost up that volume. And then when you start talking again, it's going to be really loud and your audio is gonna sound terrible, it's gonna sound distorted until it automatically lowers it back down. So it's constantly checking, constantly adjusting your volume levels based on when you're speaking or when there's noise or audio or not. So to set your volume level, this is usually done inside your camera settings. You'll have to go through to where you find the audio settings or the microphone settings. And in there, you'll have an option to adjust your microphone volume levels. Now, if your camera shows the audio bars or the visual representation of audio coming in through your microphone, you'll wanna make sure that you are setting this well below the red area or well below the maximum. And you also wanna leave a little bit of space or a little bit of breathing room. So that worst case, the audio you're capturing if it got louder, someone sneezed, someone coughed, or someone got excited and started talking louder, that it's still not gonna max out and hit that end peak limit. Because if it does that, that's when your audio is gonna sound bad, it's gonna sound distorted, and it's also gonna be annoying and distracting for your viewers watching. So you wanna set your volume levels to a point that even worst case, you're still not gonna hit that maximum volume point. And the last one then, number nine, is your focus. This is another one that I would strongly recommend, depending on the videos that you're making, that you are locking down your focus so that you have zero chance that your camera is gonna automatically adjust and change the focus on you while you're recording and leaving you or the subject of your video out of focus. Some cameras out there do have really good autofocus, but a lot of them don't. So I like to remove that risk of ruining your shot by just putting your camera into manual focus. Now you might be thinking, but Justin, I'm shooting my videos by myself. So how am I gonna manually set the focus if it's me that needs to be in focus? So I'd say ideally, yes, if you've got someone there to help you, then that's going to obviously be easy. They can set the focus for you. But if you don't, you can still do it. You wanna use something as a placeholder instead of you. So it could be a pillow, it could be a light stand could be anything that you've got that you can bring into your shot and focus on that and then swap it out move it out of the way and put yourself in that position knowing that your focus is locked down or another way that you can do it is a lot of cameras these days have wi-fi control capabilities so that you can control your camera and set everything up while you're standing in front of it just using a phone or a tablet that's exactly what i'm doing here right now i am controlling and watching and monitoring my shot here on my panasonic camera just from an iphone so this way i can get into position Position, I can set the focus and make sure that this shot and everything is all good. So that's it. You now know how to get your camera set up and to get the best results out of your camera. Now there's two videos linked on screen. The first one is all around helping you get that blurry background look in your videos, no matter which camera you're using. And the second one is all around microphones, helping you find and decide which is the best microphone for your videos. I'll see you in the next one.